We're gonna check another thing off the bucket list here with Peter from HTP. We're gonna weld some titanium. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, internet. We're gonna grow up and learn how to do weld porn stuff. Yeah. Well, something. No, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll melt something. It's thin, light. I bet this would shatter if I dropped it, huh? Yeah, I bet you it would. <laughs> Not that that ever happened to me, but I heard of guys doing that. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've, and, and the I only also, part I also heard when that happens to you, that that thing is like big bucks too, you know? You're not yeah. gonna buy this for like 20 or $30. No, I'm sure not. Big boy toys. This is the torch she told you not to worry about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're back with Peter from HTP. And again. Uh, thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I think the next thing we wanna work through is some titanium. Titanium Another is expensive, thing I've, I've heard. So I've heard. Yeah. And, uh, but you can get paid a decent amount for being able to weld it. When you're good at it, apparently I'm not. When I posted that weld on the other thing, somebody said I welded it with a potato. And it was just if, the most horrible and god awful piece he's ever seen. If you can do this with a potato, I can't wait to see what you can do <laughs> with the Invertig 251 DC. So, when it comes to titanium, this looks like, uh, what is this, 095 wall tubing or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. Aaron's the bike builder. 14 gauge that or is. something, yeah. So where do you start, other than the torch and the gas lens setup and all that, where do you start on the machine side when it comes to titanium? Well, DC and a lot of gas, a lot of post flow. You're supposed to perch everything on the inside, sure. which clearly I did not. Yeah. Life is too short for that. Yeah. <laughs> Cleanliness, use a fresh saw blade, use a file, clean it up, get the oxides off, scotch it, acetone wash it, scotch it again. Use clean, new, white gloves, not like your old greasy, oily gloves to do whatever. Okay, that's all out the window, right? But it's a full, no, it's a full on. It's like, a full white on glove titanium. Affair. Well, here's the problem this piece of titanium is probably worth a hundred and a half, and the filler rod is worth another ten dollars. So if you do this for a living and you want us to be right, you, you really don't want to produce that much scrap. Right. Theoretically, every DC machine can weld titanium. Mm -hmm. And the way how you do this, even without a trailing shield, is you do one dab, then keep your filler rod in the shielding gas envelope, take the arc off or way back, and then let it cool, and then do another dab, let it cool. If you weld and you just like cruise right around it, you're losing the shielding gas envelope on the backside where it's still hot. When I welded this, I think I welded this in eight sections, mm -hmm. like here, there, in between. Right. And, and so that I was never welding more than like an eighth of that pipe circumference mm -hmm. to maintain shielding envelope and in between, take a little bit time, let it cool back to ambient temperature. And I still have a little bit of brownish, bluish on the outside there. It's not too bad. Sort of your heat affected zone yes, on the outside. Yes, it's really critical. So take your time, low amperage, high gas flow, take breaks in between, let it cool. That's basically. Sure what it is. So it's less about settings and more about technique in a way. Well, now that you said settings, typically what people do is they weld with some sort of pulse that helps them to focus the arc. Right. And then what they do is they do a slow pulse with the pedal, like go in, do a dab, get out. Go in, do a dab, get out. So what we did on this machine, first machine on the North American market to have this, is a double pulse, DC double pulse. You can set your high speed pulse to focus your arc and mm -hmm. reduce some heat input. And then your low speed pulse to get your texture in it. Right. Or to time the way how you dab the filler. Yeah, right. And if you raise the low speed just a little bit, then you can also get less heat in general, a faster travel speed. But again, don't lose your, your gas envelope mm -hmm. on it. So let's set this up here. Mode, 2T pedal slider. We're gonna go to DC, we're gonna go to double pulse, high frequency, and we're gonna, I don't know what I needed for this, 100-ish amps maybe, maybe with the pulse a little bit more, just be easy on the pedal there, 120. Mm -hmm. And then I will be setting our hot start back to auto. We don't need a five amp hot start on this. Your pulse frequency on the low speed pulse, do you wanna time it or do you just want it to I'm pretty used to pulsing with my foot, like the low speed stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna leap the low speed at a 10. 
50% on, 50% background, and then the high speed, we're gonna do 200 with a 35% on and a 25% background. And then let's see how that works out for us. That's a lot of stuff I've never seen before. Cool. You got a small piece of uh, mild steel or stainless steel just for me to run one across to totally. see yeah. how. This here is, uh, these are little bits are stainless. Okay, so you wanna grab a helmet. I'm gonna do as if this was titanium. If this was titanium, that's kinda how you would do it. You would light this up. And then you would have a post flow. Watch your eyes, I'm gonna light it just to keep the post flow going. See, I'm already losing shielding gas. I wanna do less stick out on this. See how it turns blue? Mm -hmm. I want to keep this more golden-ish. Get the flow bumped up to 50. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to set my post flow to 50. Yeah, I like the lower frequency to be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And I might just do that again. Oh, give me on the pedal uh, 150, 160. I pulled the pillar rod out too quick when I was lifting the helmet. There. Better-ish. So I you, still don't like it. You're using the stainless here to pay attention to your heat control so that when we yes. transfer over. You're good there. You got it. Right can, there. Can you turn that off? Or is no, it just... it'll turn off eventually. 50 seconds, remember? Mm -hmm. on, on titanium, we really want that. So you'd hold it there for a while. Yes, you hold it there until it shuts off, absolutely. Mm. So the first thing you said is the So the this is a low, low, low speed pulse, 1.2 yeah. pulses per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50% pulse on time, 70% background. Mm -hmm. The high speed pulse is 200 with a 50% on time and a 25% background. So let's see how that works out. So for stainless, we wouldn't need to be going this overkill, obviously, but... No, you don't have to go this overkill, but if you go away too soon, you see the color changing right away. And you see now we got this nice shiny color here, that's silvery, like you're supposed to yeah, have Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can tell that my, my colors are working out a lot better now on the stainless than what they used to be. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is I don't like stainless. I hate stainless. I do about five stainless jobs a year. It's tricky. Yeah. And titanium, this was like the fourth time in my life welding titanium ever. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to consider myself an expert or anything mm -hmm. by no means. So when it comes to aluminum, I do a lot of aluminum on yeah. an almost daily basis. And with stainless, I'm just lacking a bunch of experience how to dial it in and what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I've done way more stainless than aluminum, so I'm kind of the opposite. Just fuse it. Just fuse it. But again, too hot, see? It's hard to believe that that's too hot because that's eighth inch stainless. I'm almost wondering if you don't have enough gas flow. Crank it up. Because this, even this one from Furic, the BBW, which is a, I don't know what size it is. Definitely not that 18. big. 18? Yeah, he says 18. this should be 45. Okay, then crank this one up to 60. That is the max 60. difference? A little bit maybe. Oh yeah, it looks shinier. Let's see what we got here. But I mean, that looks reasonable. Looks good. You know, I don't like that haze around here. So that's something that's not good in titanium. Yeah. Why? Well, the weld itself is clean. In stainless, that wouldn't be good either. You know, there's too much heat affected zone there. I don't know if it comes off with a passivation machine or not, but. Mm -hmm.
see I pulled that out too soon. Now it's all brown and black. Mm -hmm. Keep the filler in the envelope. Keep the filler. Too. But I raised my hood with the left hand mm -hmm. out of habit. So, well, the weld itself looks good. Mm -hmm. I suppose run with it, see what happens. Yeah, I mean, just because you see a little heat affected zone, I, I don't know if that's a deal breaker. On titanium, from what I have heard, supposedly yes, but oh, I'm not an expert on this. Do you have any input on it? No, I just am immediately <laughs> gaining so much appreciation for some of the five frame builders that run around. Oh, <laughs> sure, yeah. I would just tack the top first, flip it over, tack the bottom, yeah. and then do more stick out for the joint. Okay. But it's up to you. Keep the post flow on. I mean, if you do a lot of stainless all the time, this will be so much easier for you. Uh, stainless is probably, uh, thin wall stainless is probably the, the type of TIG I'm the best at. I've spent the most time doing. It's good, I hate it. Mm -hmm. Exhausts. All kinds of hydraulic exhaust. fluid lines and stuff I used to do, or uh -huh. decorative railing with like 035 stainless wall thickness tubing. Mm -hmm. And I used to be okay ish at it, and I haven't done it in 15 years, and now my eyesight is gone. And it's just. Mm -hmm. All right, flip her over. I'll say that's a lot of post. Flip. Well, on a, on a tech weld, yes, but once you weld your, yeah. you know, that three eighths of an inch on the joint. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it feels like stainless so far, which is kind of cool. One of those meet your heroes mm -hmm. moments where you're like, huh. Oh, you're a person. It's just metal after all. Yeah, right. All right, now what I would do is I would start probably somewhere like here and weld uphill. Mm-hmm, okay. Like something like that. Filler, keep it in the envelope, too late. Yeah. And it's a long run for titanium there. Honestly seemed a little hot anyway. You turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Now explain again why it's important to keep the filler rod in the... Oh, because it turns black, just like the tungsten if you don't have enough post flow oh, on. Gotcha, gotcha. Because so the titanium is not supposed to turn black, so you're supposed to keep, um, so keep it in the filler, shielding envelope. Yes. Yeah. yeah, 125 instead of 160. Yeah, I mean, it was moving though at that. That amperage. Oh, here, you weld that, then he welds another one because the perfect one for you left handed to weld up here. Yeah, here. yeah, and I'm gonna get a perfect good, team is tag team. <laughs> I'm gonna get a. It's funny because I'm right handed, but I taught myself to weld left handed. Well, my biggest issue is wire feed with my left hand, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah, well, that's when I was deciding, I was like, I'm gonna give my right hand the hardest job, right? Which, which is why I did. Yeah, I constantly struggle. <laughs> That's a great metronome for that. I could do this all day long. Took it out too fast again, but. That's habit, man, that's just. Yeah. You can't break it. No, that's eight years of not ever doing that. I mean, with these settings and this setup, this is like butter. Is tie filler, is it just straight titanium? Is there an additive? There's two there? different titanium fillers. I don't know, even know which one that is. I've heard most of them are just 100% titanium. Yeah, most of them are, but there's a, there's two different kinds of titanium fillers. There's one that's more popular and the other one's less popular. I don't know for sure. There you go. Coming oh, for it. Yeah, that Robin better, be, that better be an Instagram post. Dang, dude, look at you. Yeah, hold on, let me, before Aaron messes it up, let me take a picture. <laughs> I'm scared. I've got a bunch of titanium spokes and I'm already thinking like, oh man. Oh yeah, it could be. Feel it right. How do you feel about your first titanium? Oh, uh, I feel satisfied. I mean, stainless is, compared to this, stainless is extremely unpredictable. But I mean, this is a new machine, new lens, new settings, new knowledge, new fit. Like this is all brand new and we're attempting to create some ideals here, some perfect world scenarios. So. Yeah, just get an idea for it over there. And just re know that when you transfer to titanium, the titanium melts easier than that stuff does.
Yeah, dude. And he kept it in. That, that's a professional, you see that? Not like me. He started nice and cold just because, yeah. 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 I give you one extra one so you can keep that, cut this, pry and practice and... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, it's like $100, $190 a pound. I believe it. Yeah. Well, and you gotta buy, you get a lot for a pound though because it's pretty light. Yeah, but still. Yeah. With this setting, I found that that low speed pulse is a pretty good metronome for when you add. Mm -hmm. If you move at that speed. Then you move fast enough too. Yeah, right. And I only dipped every other and that's why I had a little bit of that yeah. heat affected zone around it. I dipped every one because I was like, oh, it's telling me when because the puddle wants to move and you mm -hmm. just give it some. Aaron, is this your first titanium experience? It is. Couple of virgins. Well, we're in Virginia. Full of them. Oh, is that all you had left? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> way to go. He got all the way to the end of the He's got right? like three quarter inch of filler left. Just stuck it in there. So, I mean, <clears throat> I know that we've talked about how expensive bike tubing is. I used to build bicycle frames um, and dealt mainly in you know, different chromolis and different mixtures, but a lot of the Thai bike builders like Thai specifically because one, you don't have to pay for finish. You can do, you just blast it or anodize it. But two, you can buy it in 20 foot sticks versus a bike frame, which every tube has budding in it. So the thickness changes depending on the length of tube. And that just gets really expensive buying each one piecemeal for yeah. each. So you can just buy one long stick. And then some guys even will do external budding too, um, which is kind of crazy. Cause then you get thicker wall and then shave it basically. Uh, um, it's kind of like a laid situation but yeah. with a belt sander essentially. Wow. But that's fine. That's super cool. <clears throat> It's pretty. That, yeah, that's a cool has. Let me finish up that top yeah, joint. Special rod. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't be able to see where the filler is, but I'm looking through the side of the cup right now, which is kind of why they started doing these kinds of cups. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was I don't the know. Main or somebody just had a great idea and made money. I don't know why they, why did they invite why did they invent tire rotation? I'm kind of tempted on cars? to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I was looking up one of the Thai frame builders that follow these two, um, and he's using just a standard 12. Frame. Yeah, I think this is in some ways overkill because I've seen some people do it with like 14s and 16s, but some people are just that good. It's not yeah. me. So if you're not that good, these things can help you a lot. Yeah. Like the same thing with the cans. I've seen guys weld cans with like a $900 import machine. Mm -hmm. Well, that guy must be a lot better welder than me because I'm not sure I can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where you do tricks like you're saying, you know, use a thicker filler, light up on the filler, yeah. back off right when it wets in, you know, you can be quick. Yeah, lay it in and kind of melt the filler onto the can rather than an actual More weld. like a brazing yes. thing than a, than a welding thing, yeah. That's awesome. Well, there it is. Welding, welding titanium. Welding titanium, not as hard as you thought it was gonna not be. Not at all. And really, based on what the welding experience itself was like, I would say the harder part's gonna be in the prep, in the cleaning, in the, you know, all that stuff. It always is. There's, and, a, there's and, a wild iPhone 14 coming into the side of the and, frame. <laughs> and, the really, and the really tough part about it is the cost. Yeah. You know, I mean. You, Everybody you, wants you a titanium at, intake you, until they see what it costs. Yes. And then aluminum is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that'd be the upsell. Like, yes. well, I'll, with this new settings, I'll show them what my aluminum welding can look like. And then it's like, well, maybe I can sell you on an aluminum intake instead. There you go.
Thank you again, man. I'm Thank saving you. those settings. Save those the settings. Great. Where can people learn more about this brand new machine and HTP in general? Uh, HTP in general on usawealth.com. There's video manuals for every machine on the website you can see. And if you want to see something about welding, not necessarily titanium, that's not me. It's more like equipment fix, junkyard stuff. Go to Zilla Welds on YouTube and learn something about welding. Do you have anybody that you would recommend for looking at titanium? Uh, Travis Field. Okay. He has his own channel. He posts more so on Instagram than he does on the YouTube channel. Like a but true titanium. Yeah, you look, at, you look at a guy who's really good and has like more than a hundred current, current pipe certifications for titanium, zirconium, duplex, Jeez. in canal pipe, and who welds like a machine. Yeah. Yeah, go, go see him. Don't, don't look at me. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> You're an expert now. <laughs> Not 100 certification expert. Well, thanks for watching. Subscribe to Lift Arc Studios, of course, and uh, usawelds.com. Super pleased with the Invertig stuff. Can't wait to do more welding. Thanks for coming Thank down. You. See you guys on the next one. Subscribe, please. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>